Hey YouTube, those of you with eagle eyes will spot some imperfections in the little drawing here. Um, don't worry, I didn't make the drawing, it was given to me. I saw it too, had a good laugh with it. But I used it, made a copy of it, cut it out to make a paper pattern, and then made a cardboard pattern out of that. And right here I'm actually using spray paint to lay out the pattern so that I can torch cut it out of some 3 16 steel plate. Now this is going to be, I need to make two of them, but they're camshaft holding tools for a Ford 3.5 liter dual overhead cam engine. They used them in the Explorers, some of the edges. Um, they, there's a bunch of vehicles they put these engines in, but in order to set the time, put a new timing set on or put a water pump on because the water pump runs off the timing. Um, you really do need the camshaft holding tools, especially for the water pump because you have to remove the timing set. And if it's got some miles on it, there's no guarantee that the factory colored links that are supposed to, that you're supposed to line up with the timing marks are still going to be there and have color on them that you can visibly see. So the easiest way to do it is to set set the timing where it initially is, lock it in place with the, these holding tools, and then you can take the timing set apart to replace the water pump or whatever you need to do, and the timing shouldn't move. Now I laid them out with paint. Uh, you can kind of see them here. Went ahead and torch cut them, and then as you'll see, and I've sped everything up a few times just to make it a little bit easier. Um, there was a lot of cutting and grinding to finish them out. Um, just so you know, if you're watching and you want some bit more exact measurements, at the end of the video, I have, towards the end of the video, there are the two most important measurements on this tool. And those are the width of the area of the tool that goes around the camshaft flats and the inside space between the two camshaft flats that are closest to one another. Those are the two most important measurements. If you have those distances, the, the, your, your slots, the correct width on your slots that go around the camshaft and your correct distance between the inside edges of each slot, the tool will work. If that is wrong, the tool will not work at all. So you have to make sure those measurements are right. And I actually have them in thousandths of an inch at the end of the video that I measured directly off the vehicle to get. And after I laid them all out on the pattern, before I did my cutting and grinding and everything else, you know, after I torched them out, I went back through and measured and marked everything and laid it out, laid it out square so that all my, all my slots, the, the edges of my slots were all parallel. Um, but that is very, very important with these parts because if they're not, they will not work. Now here I'm using an angle grinder, uh, grinding wheel. I had a wafer wheel or a cutting disc. Um, that I use to get in there and, and straighten out the lines and actually trim them all the way back because I just did a rough cut with the torch. I didn't want to get in too close um, and risk having to recut another one. But there was a lot of grinding and going through the cutting disc and just trimming and removing metal. And I actually had to use a second full new full-size grinding wheel to get down to the bottom of the, the areas that go over top of the, the cams. Um, the slightly worn one wasn't quite big enough, so once I got to that point, I actually put a brand new grinding wheel on just to finish that out, clean it out. Um, and then what I, I edited it out, I, I had to do a lot of editing to this video because I had almost two hours worth of video by the time I got done. Um, but some of what I took out was actually me going through and cleaning everything up with a file, making sure it was fairly square, uh, making sure I don't have any burrs on it. 
and just getting it all clean because you don't want any of that going down in the engine. Um, I didn't paint these tools. I could probably take them home, throw them in my blast cabinet, and uh, clean them up real good and throw a coat of paint on them, and they'd look great. Um, they're just going to go in the, in the toolbox drawer until the next time we need them. But, you know, I figured I'd shoot you guys this video and get it posted. That way you could see that, you know, sometimes when you need a tool to actually buy this, a set of these, I think through Ford is almost $400 or through whomever you can get them through. I'm not sure if you can get them through Ford or not. Um, somebody that used to work at the shop that I worked for was the one that got the drawing for me. They'd, they'd used one, they traced it out, measured it out. Um, you know, hence some of the goofy measurements in there. But, uh, you know, you can use those measurements if you need to. And I'm sure anybody with the ability to do what I'm doing here and make, make the tool can take the measurements in the, in the drawing there at the beginning of the video and the measurements at the tail end and actually make a useful tool out of this and save yourself some money. It is going to take you a couple hours to do it right, though. So just take your time and uh, anything's possible. You know, you can, you can do it and it will work. Okay, here you'll see me actually measuring up a brand new grinding wheel against my old one. This is where I swapped out for the new one to finish out the bottom of all the grooves. Um, and no, I don't advertise for Dr. Pepper. That was one that was sitting there on the workbench that I figured I'd leave just in case I needed a little liquid to, you know, cool, you should cool something off and put some sparks out. Whatever the case may be. Uh, you see there's a die grinder there that cropped up in part of the video that I edited out. Um, I had a rotary rasp in there that I was trying to use in the bottom of the groove and on the steel it wasn't working so hot so I just opted to get a bigger grinding wheel and go that route. Um, but you know, just be patient, take your time, don't overdo it because you can't put the metal back. But, uh, you know, this is another example of some of the things that you can do when you're trying to get a job done on a budget. Um, this is not the first tool I've made by any stretch of the imagination. I've actually made a tool for uh, holding the timing chain in place on the Ford V10s. 
since I didn't have I didn't have one and I needed to replace a camshaft on one of them uh, it works great keep it in my box I've used a made a, uh, a socket to be able to turn over a Ford six liter power stroke because they have four bolts that hold the harmonic balancer on not one center bolt so you can't just put a socket on them and roll them over but uh, here I'm just doing my final deburring cleaning up um, you know I'm hitting the grinding wheel and yes for my uh, safety sallies out there I do have safety glasses on I know my face shield is up it was a bit scratched up and I was trying to see through it so I got it out of the way and I do still have safety glasses on So this is about the tail end of it, just getting her all cleaned up and uh, ready to test fit for the fi final time and make sure everything is, uh, everything is good. All right, so I just finished deburring it, comparing it to the pattern one last time before I did my final measurements with calipers off camera. Uh, you're gonna see one of them finished here in just a second with the other one that'll have the measurements written on it. The minimum width for the grooves is 860 thousandths and the maximum inside distance between the two slots is 3.058 inches. So, Pay real close attention to those. Here's the finished product in the car. They work great. Hopefully this helps somebody. If you have any questions, please drop them in the comments section. Give me a thumbs up, rate the video, and subscribe. Have a nice day.